Dark Magician Go Burr. Now that I've got your attention, let's rate Yu-Gi-Oh. In this episode, we're going to discuss Dark Magician. When I'm rate something, I usually have five categories. One being the deck's goal, the second being its consistency, the third being power, the fourth being longevity, and the fifth being resiliency. These are all important factors to determining whether a deck will be great, will be good, or will be pretty mediocre. But with that, let's figure out where the ultimate ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense falls in these categories. To start, let's discuss the Dark Magician's goal. The goal of the deck is to control the game to a point where you can eventually win through powerful disruption like Destined Rivals and hard to deal with boss monsters like Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Dragoon specifically really helps this deck immensely. Dark Magician is not a brick in this deck and in fact you actually want to be putting it in the graveyard, so getting access to Verte not only gives you an insane powerful boss monster that you're trying to end on every single turn, but additionally helps you with your win condition of setting up Dark Magician to be revived with cards like Internal Soul. And just the inherent fact that Dark Dragoon is so powerful makes this deck significantly better than it would have been without it. I don't even think this deck could be average without Dragoon. And comparing this to the rest of the metagame, even with a deck like Dogmatica Invoke, this deck can put out Dragoon. But it also doesn't do anything degenerate like the rest of the uh, except potentially putting a window on field. However, because of its ability to compete, because its one card combos are so potent, I could easily see Dark Magician's goal of putting a Dark Dragoon on field with backup actually being strong enough to contend with the rest of the metagame. That's why I'm going to give this category for Dark Magician a 4 out of 5. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date with with my latest content, and if you want to support me and what I do, make sure to check out my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing your trading card product. Not only are you going to be buying cards from there regardless, but you're going to be buying cards and supporting me at the same time, and I cannot thank you enough for that. But with that, let's continue. Next, let's talk about consistency, and this is where the deck starts to struggle a bit. In theory, the goal is great, but the consistency is not necessarily there, especially because all of your combos require two to four cards. You don't really have a one card starter like all of these other meta decks, and you're not immediately able to search out everything quite easily. See, the deck has searchers, but they require external factors to get them all set up. A card like Dark Magical Circle requires requires you to not whiff on it and actually hit the cards you need, whereas a card like Soul Servant requires setup by having a Dark Magician in your grave. In general, however, this deck does have a lot of starters in the form of Magician Souls and Magician's Rod, and because of this, I wouldn't argue that the deck is inconsistent by any means, because they do have a lot of ways to get where you want to be, especially because Dark Dragoon requires any two monsters to make the combo work. But because it does require more multiple cards, I'm going to give this consistency category a 3 out of 5. It's pretty average overall. Next, let's talk about the power of the deck. While the goal in concept is great, the ability to put out 2 to 4 disruption turn 1 is nothing exceptional, especially when we look at other decks' ability to do the same with just one card rather than your entire hand. Plus, because you require 2 to 4 cards to make the deck work, it means you have less of an ability to play generic cards like hand traps. Not that you can't play hand traps, but it definitely won't be as potent as in a deck like Dogmatica Invoke. That's why I'm again gonna give this category a 3 out of 5. Longevity. So it's not exceptional at grinding like Eldritch, because, I mean, let's be real here, Eldritch has every trap card floating every single turn. That's an exceptional grind game for a deck, but that doesn't mean Dark Magician is bad necessarily at having longevity, especially because a card like Eternal Soul can constantly revive every single turn, and then Dark Magical Circle is gonna be able to ban every single turn, but again, I don't think the longevity is anything outstanding to be praised about, so I'm just going to give this another 3 out of 5. For resiliency, going second can be a struggle for Dark Magician. Again, 2-4 to four cards to make a combo work, and while you can get access to Verte, that's easily stopped by one card that your opponent's most likely going to have. If you can't get your plays going, then you can't really do anything for that matter, and so that's why I'm going to give this category a 2 out of 5. It's not impossible to go second by any means. Again, Dragoon is a hell of a card, but I wouldn't say you'd be wanting to go second in any situation with Dark Magician, and nothing 
really stands out for going second, except potentially the new card successor soul. So the final rating, I'm gonna give this deck a three out of five. I don't think this deck does anything exceptional. The goal is very solid, but that's not an over the top goal and that's not easily as achievable. Let's take a deck like Eldritch again. This deck can do something insane. With a card like Jet Synchron, the discard is irrelevant and you're getting Halki Phyrax into a multitude of negates, which in general gives a reason to play that deck over any other. But for Dark Magician, your main reason to play this deck over any other is Dragoon. And even then, a ton of other decks can play Dragoon. Sure, you can make the argument that by sending a Dark Magician to the grave, you're instead of playing a brick, fueling your win condition of setting up Dark Magicians to be revived with Eternal Soul. But is that really better than what other decks can do? No, it's not. And that's why, in the end, I really think this deck's just average overall and doesn't do anything exceptional, but is definitely a fun rogue deck to mess with. The way my hands feel on your body, the way we're dancing in